Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co-anchors with me, Ife Olua Oshunke and Ife Omai. Yes, Hello. that's me. Which one is you? Ife Olua Oshunke. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everybody knows that by now. That's why I'm wondering why you keep insinuating that it's you. Before Uncle. Like, Ife Omai is ready oh, today. Nice, so though. let's Thank just... You. Yeah, she looks... Me. You do too. I love both of you. Mm. Well, let's, Actually, let's do, not let's you really, really but you look nice. What's yeah. well, yeah. not me like really? I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, you know we do uh, this always, uh, right? Why are you always hating, though? Uh, hey, what? Huh? <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, Nigerian singer Dija raises awareness for obstetric fistula. She says that young girls need to be allowed to grow up before doing grown man and women things like marriage and anything to do with sexual reproduction. Um, she says, quote, if you really mean well, you will at least give her until 18 years, 18 years old while honestly guiding her spirit, end of quote. She went on to explain that obstetric fistula is very high in young girls in early marriages whose reproductive systems have not fully developed. Mm. I've always said this, like, um, the people who should be arrested for rape first, uh, um, the ones who do the child marriage thing, especially our politicians and all that, that go marry young girls that are not old enough to give their consent and they say they've married them and to me they're rapists, if you ask me, they are rapists, regardless of how you want to look at it, whether the father gave their, you know, the father is not supposed to be the one to give consent over another person's body. The mother is not supposed to be the one to give consent. So if you are involved in such acts, maybe you should just stop and just go and give those kids back to their parents and say, okay, I'll come back for them when they're old enough. If you are still alive, because most of them are going to die soon anyways, and wow. they go for these young girls. Okay. It's very shameful. It is perverted. Um, but even, I like the, the, the angle that you brought in. And yes, I agree with everything you said. But also, not so, so look at the younger ones. So like the 27-year-olds, the 30-year-olds, the 40-year-olds that go for girls that are 17 and 16 and 15 because they're maybe a lot more developed or some <clears throat> things like that. I think all of those things are still in the same category as what you've mentioned. Um, and that, you know, a woman needs to be allowed. I like how she said a, a woman needs to be allowed to, to grow. There's a lot of things that are, you know, you're still trying to discover and it's complicated and it's bizarre and the world is, can be a bit, you know, a bit much that involving sex and reproduction is, in, in a woman's life too early, is very unnecessary and can be avoided. All you just need to do is wait or go for another woman who is more mature and developed. I like everything that she said, but I know that the backlash to this conversation will be that it's cultural and that these women like it. And like I've always said, poverty is the problem of a lot of things. So this is a way to like, you know, elude a lot of women away from poverty. So most of them are willing, um, even if they're not necessarily interested, they are willing as their dutiful right to get their families out of that. So they've been they, brainwashed to think that's a dutiful wife to get their family out yes, of poverty. Um, but, Let's not take the conversation away from um, obstetric fistula because I think that's what Dija was trying to raise awareness mm -hmm. for. And this is something that has been going on for a while. The last um, commemoration of the UND for obstetric fistula, we had to extensively speak to a doctor and also someone who has been in the forefront of um, ensuring that some of these um, women and girls get the surgery they need because this mm -hmm. is not a, a thing of you would get better. You have to go through surgery to get better and the surgery doesn't come cheap so talking about poverty that you're talking about so these people in poverty or maybe being neglected how exactly do they get the funds to um go through the surgery surgery required to get better i, I don't understand the idea of a grown man trying to get married to a child and they say it's culture i'm sorry but i can't understand that culture, neither can I accept it. And um, I also like what Deja does. She's not in the news for just being in the news, never. She's always in the news raising um, awareness. And she's from the north. And this um, case is predominantly um, in the northern part of Nigeria. Yes, we have such cases um, nationwide, but it's predominantly in that area. And I like that she's doing this because if someone like me is saying it, it's possible that I have not experienced it firsthand in, in terms of being there to mm. see these girls. But of course, she has her NGO. Um, she goes to um, the area and she knows what she's talking about. So I'm hoping that um, her influence can 
maybe touch the kind of people if your Shukai has talked about mm. and have them do the right thing because we cannot wait for them to be dead before we um, look into the child acts marriage beyond culture beyond tradition yeah, the, yeah so <laughs> Mm. I'm talking about the coronavirus the, is up. In oh yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just hope that the authorities. I mean, there are too many things we need attention on. And I remember there was a time you said that um, it's very overwhelming that we don't even know if we need to focus on them one after the other or focus on everything at the same time. But I, I don't know if focusing one after the other would help because a lot of people will suffer. But um, there are too much in the government already. I mean, aids of this, help of this, mm. special assistance of this. So it's not. It shouldn't be too. Much and to the pay attention part to every part of sector, this whole really. thing is that when the substary fistula starts, they would be the one to neglect these girls yeah. and treat them like they're trash or mm. they're outcast mm -hmm. because you they do not even understand so, the concept. I even heard they say yeah, because, because they committed adultery, yeah, and that's why um, they are having this because the culture already is know. for the man, it's for the pleasure of the man. And if you notice, a lot of people who involve what themselves pleasure? in this are they're perverted, they find pleasure, if they didn't have pleasure, they won't do it. Um, I think it's because they also like the idea of, um, you know, them being young. I don't know if you remember that lady that came out that mar that divorced the Oba or of mm -hmm, whatever, mm -hmm. and she was saying that she f she found her husband who raped the young person and the, the young child or something, thirteen or whatever. And then when they asked, she was like, "Because I can." And, and you I, see a lot of people supporting that, saying, "Oh, he's the Oba, so he can, can do get what it, he wants yeah. to Yeah, I think it's also the idea of like something really fresh, something really young. It's perverted and it's it's kind of like I'm conquering as many options as I can because they're not only always married to the young person; they always have extra yeah. wives. So they want to go younger and explore more. So it's really just driven from per, um, per, perversion. perversion, yeah. And then it's a, it's a man's world, so they, they are allowed to do that because it would not fly anywhere if a grown woman put a boy in a house yeah, and no said she wanted to marry. It's a man's world, though. <laughs> it's a world for both genders. That's where we want to get to. Yes, that's, yeah. the, that's the goal. But moving on. That's um, where we are. Mm -hmm. On the previous episode, we discussed the Nigerian Bar Association um, through the Assistant National Publicity Secretary, Habib Lawal, calling out and using Lassie C. Elenu as a point of reference to other comedians on representation of lawyers in, his, in their jokes. Um, Habib said the NBA had been tagged and is using Lassie C. as a point of reference to all other comedians to represent the profession in their works appropriately. Now joining us to maybe um, clearly state what he meant or what the position of the NBA is um, Habib Lawal himself. Hello, Habib. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Very great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. So a lot of people are of the opinion that um, this is highly unnecessary. So would you want to tell us what the exact position of the NBA is and why that tweet was necessary? Oh, well, the thing is this, uh, it has to be said that we do not condemn La Sisi or any other comedian, and even by extension, Nollywood, for their art. As a matter of fact, they are doing a very good job, and we appreciate that. But we have reservation for the way Amene himself and other comedians, and indeed Nollywood, represents the appearance of lawyers in their works. Now, I've seen a lot of people talking about policemen, soldiers, uh, Navy personnel and all of that, uh, comedians mimicking the way they, are, they dress or wearing their attire and all of that. This set of people are not paid by government on the way or by the way they appear. But our job is one that thrives on perception. Now, a continuous ridicule or simplistic um, portrayal of lawyers in the art of these comedians or even artists have a way of affecting the perception a potential client has against lawyer. If every day you go on the internet, you open your social media, you watch uh, DSTV or you watch Plus TV, and then all you are seeing is a lawyer that appears the way La Cici or is it Williams Uchembu 
supposedly show a lawyer to be. If for whatever it is worth someday, you meet a young lawyer and you have a brief, there is no way in your subconscious that that portrayal that you have heard would not come to play in you assessing the lawyer. Right. We have to appreciate the fact that comedians and artists have a far-reaching influence in what they portray in their works. Sorry, are you saying, course, hello, are you saying your potential clients um, do not understand the difference between comedy and, and real life? Reality. Now, I can assure you that this is not particularly about Lassesi or other comedians, but it touches even on the way Nollywood portrays lawyers. Now, we have a lot of people that have never even had a courtroom experience before, and their first impression of a lawyer, it's not something that one will be deliberate about, but it's there your subconscious one way or the other. It's what you often see a lawyer to be on <clears throat> African magic or on um, or on Twitter or Instagram, as the case may be. Okay, I'll be. So the, so the point is this. You could do your job. For one, we believe that Lassis is very talented. And of course, all other comedians are talented. But there is nothing stopping them from at least appearing the way lawyers appear in making their art. OK, Abib, that it doesn't takes me to make my it question. less comical. OK, are you with now, me, Abib? Now the we OK, I'm here. All right, my question is, um, are you concerned about the appearance or the manner in which they speak? Is it the appearance, the way they are done the wig and gown? Of course, it is when they are done the wig and gown. That is our complaint. All right, so the speaking wig, of the, the wig and gown, and gown, can you give me a brief history of why lawyers wear the wig and why lawyers wear the gown? Oh, well, it is a tradition from, the, from England okay. where we received our common law. Yeah. And of course, the law that we practice in Nigeria now. Mm -hmm. Now, it is something that is like an insignia of our profession. Lawyers wear suits on the streets, but no lawyer wears wig and gown on the streets. Okay. And our job is a conservative one. Our profession is a conservative one that places a lot of premium on the way you appear, both in court and outside the court. Now, okay. if you must do your art, there is no problem at all. As a matter of fact, we enjoy all the humor. But right, so if you must you think, not adorn that wig and gun and the bib and look like a lawyer, then please, for God's sake, look like a lawyer. Don't you think so that, that we have bigger problems to address than Lassie C. Eleno? Because if we are talking about the wig and gown, now we're wearing yeah. our colonial master's wig, which it, it was something that you said, you rightly said, was brought from England. Now, is that yeah. something we should still adopt? And the gown was actually a morning gown, which the lawyers decided to keep just to show the somber nature of the profession. So don't you think that's a problem in itself and we should be addressing such things and try to keep our own originality and authenticity instead of focusing on someone like Lassie CLN who is just putting bread and butter on his table? All right, all right. Thank you so much. With the greatest respect, I beg to disagree with you. We have different challenges at the bar, but the simplistic way with which you are representing it is as though condemning the EFCC for arresting Yahoo boys or all these fraudsters because we have big politicians taking money from our vaults every day. That's a very simplistic way of looking at this thing. And by the way, until we as a legal profession decide to do away with the wig and gun, which of course is a valid argument, but that is for us to determine Okay, that is for all lawyers in Nigeria to determine argument, where they want right? to be done with it. But you agree Until it's a we valid are argument. Are you there? Yeah, but you agree it's a valid argument. Hello? But you agree it is a valid argument for us to do away with the wig and gown. It, it is a valid argument, but it's valid, valid argument for lawyers, not for non-lawyers. Mm. Okay, my it's final... It's a valid argument for lawyers. Final so question. Until we do away with it. Final question here, because we don't have a lot of time. Um, you right. mentioned in your tweet that 
you can take the necessary um, you know, action steps. steps and all that. On what grounds would that look like? What would you be charging him for? Or not even just him, because like you said, it's not about Lassisi and the bigger picture. So I go and I put something online trying to be funny and I don't represent, you know, the NBA well with the outfit, not even the content now. And then get a million followers and it itches you the wrong way. How would you come and attack me? Like, what, what would I be expecting? Oh, well, the thing is that necessary actions include a lot of things. We wish and hope that the persons that we are addressing, the persons that are concerned, would see this and see reasoning with us, that their job doesn't become less humorous or, 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 or lesser in content if they appear the way lawyers appear. That's all. Okay. Um, um, Habib, so if perhaps, for example, Lassiti Eleno um, puts out another video without an effort to look like a lawyer, like you're saying, what should he be expecting? Well, your, your question is hypothetical. Until that happens, I wouldn't know the answer to give. So you, you don't know, you, you just made a threat, actually. I can, I can put it that way to say um, you are using Lassisi as a point of reference to warn other comedians as well to say that they have to represent lawyers appropriately, right? So are you saying you did not expect or there is no possibility that um, there will be other comedians that would not listen to that warning? Well, there was no threat. It's an advice to them. And that advice is meant to be taken or not. Mm. Okay. okay. So we'll keep watching and hope that your advice is taken. And when it's not, then we'll be watching to see the steps of the NBA as well. Thank you so, so much. It's a pleasure being with you. And have a wonderful day. You too. You too. Okay. Um, this is interesting, I think. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, he's definitely a good lawyer. I liked how he was evading um, a lot of questions. I wanted, I wanted him to answer how he was going to take those necessary steps. I mean, they were in bold letters on his is Twitter. That, evading questions, is that what makes a person a good lawyer? Well, I mean, you have to be smart enough to do that and not really tie yourself in any angles. You can't hold him for anything that he's just said. That's good for me, Sha. But I like okay, the fact you, that they're fact. actually considering throwing away the wig and gown. He's not saying they're considering. He said, he said it's a valid argument. Yeah, for him to know that it is a valid he's argument and it. it's something they thought about or they probably discussed. But I, also like I how think that said. if they're considering it, somebody in his position at the NBA would not even put out this tweet at all because that would now not be the thing to represent your well, people. Well, he's telling you that that's a simplistic answer now that, because you asked that question as well and he's saying, yeah, but just because we have a bigger problem doesn't mean that the small problems can also be addressed. So just because I'm taking the 419 boys mm. um, doesn't mean that you should mock that because we need to catch the bigger fish that's mm. on top. That's the answer to I think to we should question. get members of his association to get what they I don't think a lot of politicians made enough money as Osh Poppy do. <laughs> okay, um, that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and send your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906005719 or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also, watch Tea Time on R2 TV and in London on Ben Television. Thank you, as always, to go to my interesting co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshonke. Yes, that's me and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsa Godwin. Do stay safe.